What really happened with Booker T and CM Punk? Tony Khan is mad at Jack Perry for last year's All In, why Cody Rhodes was allowed to swear on Raw, and more. I'm Luke Owen, and this is the Wrestle Talk News. Support Wrestle Talk! Wrestling. Wrestling is a weird place, and covering wrestling is an even weirder place. Last week on his podcast, Booker T claimed that he had a run-in with CM Punk while Punk was visiting NXT. He told his co-host that they needed to talk about this off-air, saying the internet might want to pick that up. Me and CM Punk almost got into it at NXT this week. And as requested, the internet did pick that up, but with a certain level of skepticism. Booker has long used podcasts and interviews to start work shoot angles that go nowhere, and Corey Brennan of Fightful Select reported that it was the case with that here as well. He noted that one source pointed out that Punk has not had any issues backstage since his return last year, and expressed surprise that Booker would make such a claim without offering more context. He even added that there was frustration within NXT talent over Booker T trying to stir up backstage drama that didn't exist, considering Punk's history with backstage drama in AEW. More on that later in this video. And now, Booker himself has explained why he said what he said. Did it for the lols. He said on his Hall of Fame podcast, look, me and CM Punk, we won't be having a fight, okay? If you hear me say anything here on the Hall of Fame, this show, it's show related. I'm trying to entertain my fans. So let's get that out there right now because that story, that 40 second story that people wrote, it was clickbait, guys. That's what it was more than anything. Did I put it out there? Did I say it? As far as I had beef, was I gonna run up? Yeah, I said it. I'm entertaining, guys. This story can be perfectly summed up by Cage Side Seat's headline, Booker T calls CM Punk's story that he started clickbait. So as a public service announcement, if you ever hear Booker T say anything on his podcast or in an interview, just know that it's not real, he's not serious. This past Monday's Raw saw Cody Rhodes fired back at The Rock following his You're Welcome promo from last Friday's Smackdown in Memphis. In it, Cody referenced the comparisons between him and Homelander, the hiring of Brian Gowitz, reports of The Rock coming back to WWE to save WrestleMania, and how The Rock's mum is really quite nice. But the big talking point was the naughty words that left the lips of Mr. Rhodes. In the promo, he called Rocky an a-hole, a whiny bitch, and said that he could suffer from Little Dick Syndrome come WrestleMania. It was a different side to Cody in WWE, and one that gave him quite a bit of bite and edge heading into WrestleMania. And it was an interesting promo given the reports that came out over the weekend, which claimed that there was general unrest in the WWE locker room over The Rock's promos. In what has become a new weekly tradition, The Rock posted a 10-minute promo to social media last Friday to hype up his 20-minute promo on SmackDown. It comes two weeks after he posted a 20-minute social media promo to hype his 40-minute promo segment. Reportedly, the reason Rocky is doing these extended social media promos is because he doesn't feel like he's getting a enough TV time on SmackDown to say everything that he wants to say. But key to these promos is that they're free from the shackles of network and cable TV, which means he can do loads and loads of swears. As my mother would say, he Fs and Jeffs throughout the videos. The reason that there's some unrest in the WWE locker room over this is because Rock can get away with it. Meanwhile, according to several websites, a memo was handed to talent that told them that they needed to watch their language on both TV and social media. It's one rule for them and another for the boss who's also part of the TKO board of directors. For what it's worth, Dave Meltzer noted on Wrestling Observer Radio that Rocky's promos are scripted and pre-approved by Fox ahead of time, so there's no heat between those two parties for his language. So if this memo was sent around which told WWE stars that they will wash their mouths out with soap if they say bad words, why did Cody get to say a few swears in his promo on Raw? We'll find out that in a moment after this word from our sponsor. Hey. Luke, have you, have you got any ideas for this Surfshark ad? Surfshark ad? Yeah, I, I'm writing the ad for Surfshark this month, but I mean, I don't know what to say. I, I feel like everyone knows about Surfshark at this point, right? What's a Surfshark? It's a, it's a VPN. What's a VPN? A, a, a virtual private network. Oh, so I'll be able to like protect my data and watch content from overseas and 
protect me from cybercrime. Yes, Luke, and our audience will be able to secure their privacy online by using the code WRESTLETALK to get three months extra for free using the link below. <sighs> I don't know. I'm all out of ideas, I'll be honest with you. Um, I mean, maybe you could come in as a cowboy and horse ride your way through the VPN world. Well, howdy do! Y'all heard about Surfshark VP and... Luke, I think I'm just going to write up the conversation we had for the ad. That'd be ridiculous, Pete. I mean, how would you end the video? Well, I... I don't... <laughs>
eight-figure deals over the course of her multi-year contract. As Johnson writes, they were record-breaking numbers for a female performer in professional wrestling and now makes her likely the top-paid female performer in the history of the business. Literally, big business. Johnson writes that top flight execs from WWE were involved in these negotiations because WWE absolutely wanted Monet back in the family. One of the criticisms from WWE fans of Monet not going back to WWE and signing instead with AEW is that she just did it for the money, which would not be a correct assumption based on Johnson's report, as WWE were offering her a similar amount. Instead, Johnson reports that Monet signed with AEW as it would allow for stronger potential, not just for herself, but for additional and future women in professional wrestling. He adds that while Monet believed returning to WWE would be beneficial, it's somewhere she's already been, and she wanted new opportunities and the option to explore things outside of wrestling. He writes, once you lock in with WWE, that becomes your utmost priority, and other projects would be automatically made secondary to WWE touring and performing. He adds, AEW also provided a chance for Monet to build a direct relationship with Warner Brothers Discovery, as well as potential access to their film and television franchises. There was reportedly some heat on Monet before she even arrived in AEW, as she said in an interview that she knew one day she would return to WWE, as she had unfinished business there. Mike Johnson writes that someone close to Monet has said that it wasn't meant as anything that would undercut AEW, but to acknowledge she started with WWE, and that perhaps she'll close things out there. Nothing more. PW Insider are also reporting that top TNA stars Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin, known as the Motor City Machine Guns, could be finishing up with the promotion as their contracts expire at the end of the month, or at the very least, might not be around as much. Johnson reports that Sabin and Shelley have been booked for a Smash Wrestling show that clashes with TNA's post-pay-per-view TV tapings on April 21st, and says it is possible that they could remain working for the company, but that TNA would no longer be their priority. Now go and watch our latest Tables, Lists and Chairs video, where we counted down our top 10 worst WrestleManias.